right, everybody, um, welcome to the video. I am really excited to share with you today how far LLMs have progressed, specifically LLMs in the AI world. So that is your large language models. And I have organized this video as noob pro expert. By no means are you a noob if you are using the noob tier tools, but you definitely need to be an expert to use the expert tools. So let's jump right in. Um, first up, we have tools like ChatGPT and Gemini. These are the websites, the web interfaces that you go to. I have them loaded up right here. So Gemini.google.com uh, and we have ChatGPT.com. Now let's give it a task and compare the two. Um, one of the advantages that you'll get from Gemini is that it has a very large uh, context window. So um, what that means is if you have very large articles, it's gonna do a better job of keeping the whole thing in mind. Um, ChatGPT may not have as much, it's not as open, so uh, I can't say for certain, but uh, one of the bragging points of Gemini is the context window. So we're gonna ask it to summarize, summarize the article and I'm going to uh, do the same thing with ChatGPT and let's see uh, oh, it's given us two responses. That's kind of cheating, right? It gets two chances at the two bites at the apple. Um, I will just go ahead with a shorter one. So let's take a look. The summary on Gemini is uh, very short. This is a document about XRP. It discusses the rises of pricing. Um, okay, I mean, it's straight to the point. It's literally five sentences. Here, we have a lot more details. So one thing that I'm noticing in the ChatGPT side is that there is specifics. We have 136% surge in pricing, not just rise in pricing. We have um, the articles from Motley Fool. So it has specific names, sources, dates, November, 2024. So in my opinion, I think ChatGPT did a better job. I think it kept in details that were missed by Gemini. I think that this is perhaps an oversimplification. So um, really up to you. If you just want it straight, cut and dry, there you go. Um, otherwise, you have ChatGPT. You also have Perplexity, you have Claude. You have a whole slew of different providers, but this is the noob tier. This is what it's about. So the next tier is the pro tier. Now, uh, the pro tier is a little bit more difficult, but by no means is it difficult. So one of my favorite tools for this is LM Studio. Um, here I've listed both Olama and LM Studio. Now the big selling point here is that it's totally private. It's offline. So this works even with the internet down. There are no API fees. The only costs are upfront hardware, um, or if you are uh, renting VP, uh, virtual private servers or computers on the internet. You can rent it by the hour there. Some of the open source models that I've personally tested and I've loved are the Llama 3 series. So 3.2 is the smaller versions. 3.1 are the larger parameter versions. You need higher spec hardware for the larger params. You need less for the lower params. Now, um, I'm including the models that I think most people are able to run. So we have Llama 3 and then Quen Coder, uh, Quen 2.5 Coder. Um, this is a specific model that does a wonderful job. I have used it with the continue extension on VS Code, and it is just wonderful. Now, um, I will show you how this works. So so you'll want to download LM Studio. Go to lmstudio.ai. And right now for the Mac, if you have Intel, you are stuck with Olama. There may be some workarounds that I'm not aware of, but right now the only Macs that are supported are the M series chips. We also have Windows and Linux ready to go. Um, you'll see that there are a couple of the most popular models listed here. Once you have opened the application, You'll go through a quick setup, but first and foremost, you'll want to download some new models. So you'll click on this purple discover button. You'll see recommended models that work with your hardware. This is a wonderful feature of LM Studio. If you're not sure about parameter size and quantization, this is why it is a pro tier tool. There are some other factors in play, but you can go ahead and just grab one of the most popular models here. Um, you'll see a little thumbs up if it is actually recommended that uh, your hardware will run this at a good performance um, 
standard, I suppose. Um, this is what you would call a quant level. We're not going to get into the details, but lower quant is lower precision. Essentially, it will run a good model with like a little bit of fuzziness in the details, but it still has all the right connections. I guess it's the best way I can describe that. But um, my favorite models are going to be the Llama, and I have the 3.1 Instruct. I definitely recommend 3.2, 3 bill param. Um, if you have low spec hardware, it is great. You can use it as a study buddy. You can ask it to give you vocab terms. It is like having Wikipedia that you can talk to. Um, Quen 2.5, this is the Instruct, but we also have Quen 2.5 Coder. So uh, you'll notice that this is more of a plain Jane, I guess, model, and this is the Coder version. So they have done additional things to make it optimized for that application. I'm using a seven bill param, um, but you don't need to worry about that. When you are using these, you will need to pair it up with a extension. So one of my favorites is actually called RuCode. RuCode is a tool that uses LLMs to help you code, um, as the name suggests. And if I'm able to pull up, sorry, RuCode here, what you'll want to do is set this to LM Studio, and you'll see your models available here. So this is how you can make use of that. There's also another extension I've uh, mentioned called the Continue extension. Um, that is a little bit more difficult to set up, so I'm not going to cover that here, but this is the right developer, continue.dev, um, if you want to try that out for yourself. All right, and that brings us into the expert tier. Um, now, I will show you a demo. This will be um, more of a very specific use case. So if you want to incorporate LLMs in your applications, if you're an application developer, if you're a software developer, this is the tool that you want to look at. So Crew AI is the one that I found that is uh, fully featured, but not um, convoluted. So um, it is a very great tool. Um, the main benefits here is you can take your local models, you can even take your online models, API keys, uh, everything um, that is available to you can be used. And you can set tasks one after the other uh, using these models. So you create a chain of events here. Um, this is great because you can use different models that are specialized in different things. So you can use things like Llama 3.1 to bring up the topics of coding that perhaps would be most interesting. And then you can use the Quen Coder model to create code snippets that are, um, you know, that's the task that it's specialized for. So you can use a lower param, a smaller model that's specialized for what you want to do, such as simple code snippets, and it'll work for that faster than if you took a big generic model, often with better results. All right, so let's take a look at a example uh, crew AI workflow. So this is the expert tier. Um, do not worry if none of this applies to you. This is really just for developers who need multi-stage AI type stuff happening. So taking a quick look at this, this is not really a crew AI tutorial, but just an example of what's possible. Um, we have different uh, agents defined here. Oops. We have different agents defined here with different uh, descriptions and outputs. Um, so you can really fine tune what you want out of these guys. I have uh, the main body here that essentially defines the different agents and then puts them into the coordinator. And then we have the topic as the input and then the current year to make it as relevant as possible. Now, one side note, I am using a local LLM for this example. So the cutoff is not going to be at 2025. Um, it's probably going to be like 2023. So we'll see what happens. But let's do a crew AI run. Let's take a look at the output in the terminal. And we should see the first agent pick up the task. And it uh, basically it, uh, articulates the task here. It's thinking, it's thinking, we can see LM studio, we have some generation happening here and we have uh activity it's come up with our list of 10 and now it's handed off the task to our reporter 
a reporter is going to expand each topic and create this report. Now it actually outputted a file for us. Let's do a preview and shrink down this. Uh, oops, that's the readme, I'm sorry. This is the report, let's do a preview. And we have multilingual uh, capabilities, advanced language models as the title, improved memory, privacy, um, and there you go. And this is just off of a very small local model. So this can be really, really powerful for applications that are specific, out in the field, repetitive, and sort of predictable, but they need that variability and dynamic element that an LLM can provide. So wonderful, wonderful tool. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe. Thank you.